In this video, we're mounting the EG4 6000 XP inverter, installing a fireproof backboard, leveling custom brackets, and wiring up the system for a clean solo install. If you're doing an off-grid hybrid or backup system, this guide will walk you through the key steps to safely mounting your inverter and getting AC power set up. Let's get started. We begin by installing a fireproof whiteboard. It's mounted between our main breaker box and the window behind it. We've already sprayed closed cell insulation using Vagabond Purple Foam. The wall is not fully finished yet, but we've pre-foamed behind the section to lock in and keep the heat down. Before mounting the inverter, I marked the screen location at eye level. This will make it easy to check the system at a glance later on. Then I used a three foot level and a carpenter's pencil to draw a clean line across the backboard, which helps me align mounting brackets perfectly. After that, I pre-drilled into the two by four studs behind the board. So we don't risk splitting the wood when the bolts go in. Now, I'm using black electrical mounting brackets. These are basic brackets you can get at Home Depot or your electric supply. They're cut to size here and secured to the studs. I start by driving in the center bolt loosely. Then, I use a level to get the brackets straight. And then once it's leveled out, guys, I drive in the left and right bolts to lock it into place. With the top bracket secured, I now install the bottom bracket in the same way. Just a bit quicker since you've already seen the process. Now, it's time to mount the EG4 6000 XP. Since I'm working solo, I placed a box beneath the inverter. This is to help support it while I line it up on the top mount and put the bolt in. Once it's balanced, I drop the center screw in, then move to the left and right bolts to lock it in fully. With the socket wrench, I tighten everything down. Now, now that the inverter's mounted, we move on to the wiring, the AC side. Starting with the inside of the inverter, I install the neutral wires to the neutral bar and ground wire to the ground terminal. Then I connect phase one and phase two wires to the load breaker, securing each one and giving a gentle tug to make sure they're locked in properly. Next, I wire up the grid breaker in the same way cutting and stripping the wires, seating them cleanly, and confirming they're tight. Now that we've got the power lines in place, I use a multimeter to check the voltage. Okay, let's just go ahead and check everything real quick as well. We'll check our grid power here. So this will go down to our neutral. This will come up to our phase one. We have 122.6, then we'll go ahead and check our phase two, 121.9, so. Everything is wired correctly, so now we move to the startup sequence. I begin by turning off the battery breaker to keep the DC disconnected for now. Then I turn on the grid breaker, followed by the load breaker. And the inverter, I flip the power switch and after a few seconds, the display comes on. It's alive. At this point, the system is running in grid pass-through mode. Okay, the power is flowing and the load breaker is supplying the building. We're not using the EPS output yet since batteries aren't connected, but everything else is functioning exactly as it should. And that wraps up the first part of our install. Now in part two, we'll unbox the EG4 server rack batteries. We'll charge them. 
We'll wire them into the bus bars and we will connect the full DC system. So be sure to like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe to follow the full series and drop any questions in the comments. I wanna thank you for watching and also invite you a $50 savings to anything at Signature Solar of $500 or more. Simply use the coupon code we have in the link or visit our special website here on the screen to always stay up with the latest coupon codes. Thanks for watching guys. Keep shining and stay charged and I'll see you in part two. Take care.